And welcome to the Super Bowl edition of And They're Off. I know the game isn't until next week, but this is our last video before kickoff. So it's my last chance to say, go G-Men. All right. Steve Haskin, we don't hesitate to stick in the needle for a bad prediction. So when credit is due, and let's face it, that is a rarity, I must acknowledge your genius. Last year, you liked Mr. Bowling, a rather obscure two-year-old at the time. He just jumps up last week to win the Lacomp Stakes. Well done, Steve. Take a bow. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. It's far from genius, though. Look, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a baseball scout. Uh, just the <laughs> thought of discovering young talent. And then when I went into racing, I wanted to be a bloodstock agent and go out there and go all around the racetracks and discover young talent. So I still do it now to an extent, but uh, unfortunately I don't get paid for doing that. But uh, it's nice to see, it's, listen, I liked what I saw with this horse at Delaware Park when he broke his maiden. I just liked everything I, I saw about him. And, um, you know, he just looked like a horse to watch. I don't know how good he is. We'll see how, you know, how good the Lacombe form holds up, but it's nice to see him win a graded stake, and it's nice to see him be on the derby trail, especially for Larry Jones, so. Yeah. But it's nice of you, it's nice of you to bring it up. I appreciate it. Yes, well, uh, yes, the, and, and the Jones boys, uh, Brereton Jones and Larry Jones, and Brett Jones are good buddies, so uh, good luck to, uh, to Mr. Boland going forward. And uh, that points us, Steve, in the direction that the three-year-old season is here. Yes, folks, it is that time of year. The Holy Bull runs this coming weekend. The two-year-old champion Hansen goes in that one. Steve, can you tell us anything about his competition in the Holy Bull? Well, first of all, it's really good to see the two-year-old champion make his three-year-old debut in January. You know, we don't see that too often anymore. Usually, whenever there's a big two-year-old we've got to wait until March before we finally see him and then he's going to have only two starts and uh, you know and then he's on a very tenuous schedule but you know the fact that they're bringing him out in January is it's nice it's something to look forward to and uh, you know it's hard to tell you what kind of a test he's going to get the main two horses are two horses that actually finished first and second in a recent allowance race at Gulfstream Park algorithms and consortium now algorithms is a, a pletcher starlight horse who is undefeated in two starts and looks uh, very very professional uh, he's a beautiful moving horse he's got a phenomenal pedigree both these colts are by bernardini consortium who looked very impressive breaking his maiden ran a good solid second beaten only a length uh, by uh, by algorithms in his in his last start he looks like he's got a lot of upside to him too. So, you know, we've got a couple of Bernardinis here who I'm sure you're interested in. And uh, either one of them could be, uh, could be any kind. Steve, we, we're gonna have to talk to our buddy Jack Wolf about his names, uh, algorithms, a little bit uh, I've already done that. I've already, huh? I, I, I've already <laughs> done that. I called him, I said, what are you doing coming up with a name like algorithms? But I can't say too much because his wife, Lori, named the horse ah, based, okay. on, on, uh, based on the dam. But I said, look, when you go over to this horse's stall, I mean, you don't, what do you call him? So I told, I, in fact, I told him, I said, as long as you don't call him Al Gore, that's all. <laughs> I guess rhythm is a good thing, but uh, I should have known Jack uh, couldn't have come up with a, with a four-syllable name like that. Okay. <laughs> all right. As long as Laurie did it, we're okay with it. All right. Yes. Steve, NBC announced this week that it is taking over the Breeders' Cup telecast from ESPN effective immediately. That means this coming Breeders' Cup in 2012, NBC further consolidates its monopoly now on horse racing, which really is a good thing. They do a good job with it, except for the fact that every Breeders' Cup race, except for the classic, is going to be aired on the NBC Sports Network. That's not NBC. That's the channel that formerly was known as Versus. A lot of people do not get their channel on their basic cable or satellite packages right now. It may become more prominent because NBC is going to put a lot of Summer Olympics coverage on it. So it's possible it gets better distribution 
between now and the Breeders' Cup. Uh, but a lot of people, let's face it, they're going to have to pony up to watch the Breeders' Cup this year. Considering I actually have to pay extra to watch TVG, don't feel too bad for yourselves, people. That's kind of what life is today. Hopefully, uh, folks may go out to their local racetracks to watch the Breeders' Cup, which would be a good thing. Steve, you okay with all of that? The one upside is that you know the, we have nine and a half hours, and eight and a half hours, unfortunately, will be on uh, on the NBC Sports Network. But the last hour, the, where they're going to be televising the Classic, will be prime time. NBC has to take full advantage of that hour that they have. They've got to start pulling in all kinds of celebrities. Get Dustin Hoffman. Get Nick Nolte. Get get Bo Derek. Uh, Bobby Flay, I don't care who they get, but make this into a glamour event. They have one hour, basically, for the world, you know, and hopefully, you know, luck by then will be a big hit, so people might be intrigued by tuning in and seeing, uh, seeing racing. Hopefully there's a good storyline in the classic, and maybe they can build from there, but they've got to make it into a glamour event, make it like that first Breeders' Cup. Yeah. We're joined now by the creator, writer, producer. Hell, he may even sell you some popcorn. Uh, the genius behind the HBO series, Luck, David Milch. David, welcome to And They're Off. Thanks. I'm glad to be with you. All right. For those who don't know, David has been a successful owner in racing. Uh, his Gilded Time and Val Royale have won Breeders' Cup races. He's also campaign graded stakes winners, Charmo, My Style, Track Monarch, Tuzla, Finder's Fortune, Above Perfection, and the aptly named Disturbing the Peace. <laughs> <laughs> David, are you currently involved in ownership? Uh, it depends who I'm fibbing to, Lenny. <laughs> 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 Will you admit being in ownership? <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it to you. <laughs> Do you have any in training right now? A couple, but uh, uh, nothing uh, of, of much distinction. Okay. Uh, being so close to horse racing, David, is it easier or, or has it been more difficult to maintain perspective as far as dealing with luck compared to the other shows you've, you've done, you know, as far as determining what stories you want to tell? Oh, I think it's been much harder. Uh, I love the game so much and it's so important to me to get it right and um uh you know you're trying always to neutralize what may be distortions of perspective or or uh uh it 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 it, it just feels as if the stakes are higher than anything that i've ever worked on before uh, i have to say that i'm 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 awfully pleased with the way things have, have worked out but but you, you you know it feels a little bit like you're in church you, if I may simplify this, you've had a uh, l kind of a love-hate relationship with horse racing th through most of your life. Can you speak just a little bit to both sides of that equation? Sure. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I think I was five or six years old, my dad took me out to the track and suggested that, uh, since he knew I was a degenerate gambler anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, he was going to facilitate my access. The, the fact that you had to be 18 to bet, we, he, he had circumvented by setting me up with Max the waiter at Saratoga. <laughs> if, if that isn't a mixed message, I don't know. <laughs> It'll do till one comes along. That's good that he knew you were a degenerate gambler at a young age. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's good. I know that you've spent time at Saratoga, haven't you? Yes, I have. Well, th this was one of the guys who, uh, there, there's that little sort of park-like area on the second floor, and uh, he, he was a real guy, and, and uh, we had a long-standing relationship. I still keep a box at Saratoga in my dad's name, I, I should tell you, si 60 years later. Yeah. Well, just the fact that his name is Max certainly certifies the story. As there you true. go. Yeah. There you go. Um, David, the racing industry get, gets very little uh, positive coverage from the mainstream media. Uh, I think some aspects of it ha have gotten very excited about the possible attention, you know, that your show is going to bring. Right. Does the industry realize what it's getting into here? This is certainly not a, a muckraking piece. 
you and I have, have, have had conversations in the past, and it would be disingenuous of me to say that I don't have a certain ambivalence, uh, uh, but that has to do with my experience much more than it does with the industry itself, which, which it seems to me is, is maligned unfairly. It's a creature of the, of the, the changing circumstances, and, and uh, it's, it's very hard uh, to adapt as quickly as it's needed to, but I, I think that it's coming along, and the character that uh, Dustin Hoffman plays is a kind of visionary who has some ideas for uh, restoring the game and, and resuscitating it, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, how those are responded to. Yeah, at the same time, yours is not going to be a show uh, given to some of the stereotypical type characters we usually see, and you know, the mass movies on the topic. Um, how much of luck comes from your personal observations? Uh, An awful lot. There, uh, there's a certain amount of, of uh, uh, compression that, that, that's involved. You, you know, characters are composites. But, uh, uh, you know, Mark Twain always used to say that uh, whenever he felt as if he had realized the character, he would he would remember that he'd met him for the first time on the river years before, and and uh, that's the case with my experience with luck. It, it, you know, it, it's it's uh, when you finally feel as if you've realized the character adequately, then you realize, oh, oh I I knew this guy 30 years ago, and you start to remember when. Thank God you made a literary reference. I was getting uh, worried there for a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. uh, the pilot episode that, that has aired uh, kind of as a sneak preview last yeah. month on HBO, uh, there was a bit of a controversy in that you did show a horse breaking down on the track. Right. Certainly there are some people who don't like that sort of thing, don't like to watch that sort of thing. Can you talk about your decision to include that, and, and do you worry about losing audience because of yeah, being I too worried, real? Yeah, uh, I worried a lot about it. Uh, on, on the other hand, um, it's it's part of the business, and, yeah. and certainly there was nothing sensationalistic uh, about the treatment. Yeah. And for me, that moment, the helplessness of the animal was treated with compassion and, and respect. The paradox uh, that the animal suffering was uh, uh, the source of the the degenerates kind of victory was something that I wanted to explore and I, I don't regret at all uh, that we included that. Yeah, it was also said against the, a, a nice moment that the jockey had as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, you've this is a, yeah. a, 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 I want to say uh, unabashedly, uh, Lenny, that th this is this is a love letter to the game, and I hope that uh, a a regular viewer will come to realize that in the same way, you know, in a long term relationship, that there that there will be some uh, uh, rocky moments. That fundamentally, th this could not be a more positive treatment of our sport. Yeah, and I wouldn't expect, uh, given your record, for you to paper over uh, things that you know do happen and are part of it. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's um, you've attracted some great film actors, uh, such as Dustin Hoffman and Nick Nolte, to luck. Uh, how did that come about? Uh, and, and please be, uh, don't be modest about it. If, if you're the reason that it came about. <laughs> There is an element of that. I mean, but Nick Nolde uh, was asked the question the other day, and he just said 70. <laughs> they, asked, <laughs> they asked why he was working on the show. And, uh, I think that uh, HBO in particular has become the setting for uh, some very ambitious work, and, and uh, it, it's no longer regarded that uh, someone who does television work is slumming. Um, and particularly actors of a particular vintage. So uh, there's that. I, I know that each of them read the script before they signed up, so at least there was that going on. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a huge coup. Uh, I'll let you go on one more, David. Uh, for people who are not familiar with the sport, and there's going to be plenty of them exposed to it through your show, uh, what do you hope they take away uh, from it by virtue of watching uh, Luck? It's the greatest game in the world. <laughs> right.
<laughs> Good answer. Luck uh, premieres on HBO this coming Sunday night, January 29th. David, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, my friend. All right. Best of luck with it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stable Boy, with your brand new HBO access, will you be tuning into Luck this weekend, or does it interfere with you watching the wonderful world of Disney? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm really excited I get to go back and watch all the back episodes of Sex and the City, so uh, I'll work Luck in. <laughs> it's just, it's just hopeless. All right, we want to thank our viewers. We want to thank David Milch for joining us. We want to thank our great sponsor, Darby Dan Farm. We will be back with you in two weeks. That's February 8th with our next And They're Off. Have a great Groundhog's Day in the meantime. Go Giants, and bye-bye, uh, Steve. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Enjoy the Super Bowl.